All right, welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We'll continue our focus on this matter. Uh, Mr. Lobi, let me ask you, I mean, uh, there's, there's another signal, another police signal, which is in circulation associated with the first one, but this one uh, was to discipline some of those who did not report after they were posted. So if you take a look at this one, because it was signed by um, CSP Otitola Olubemi, OC Provost, PMF for Commissioner of Police, Police Mobile Force Headquarters, Abuja. This is in circulation, and they copied uh, several, uh, they copied the IG, they copied Commissioners of Police. So, is there any truth in this particular report? Do you think they signed it, or is this document also not true? That document is false. You see, in the police administration, a signal that is going to AIGs, DIGs, cannot be signed by Chief Superintendent of Police. This case we cannot sign when they have commissioners, we have AIGs, we have AIG in charge of uh, mob, PM, mobile, we have a DIG in charge of operations. So it is, uh, that, 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 that statement is, uh, that uh, signal is uh, not authentic from the police. Some must have uh, just, just uh, rejected that based on his own female imagination to cause, uh, maybe based to cause uh, a pro whatever his intentions. So that signal is not authentic because like no signal, that be signed by a CSP. It's just if just a DPO at a DPO level, and then you have a commissioner, we have a AIGs, we have DIGs, and then I don't think it's that's that, that's not it's not authentic. Okay, it's but just, there's another just one. Information from some okay, just a minute. Mysterious persons. There's another one which is also in circulation. Uh, also speaks to the same matter, which is about it talks about the heading was discipline general, and this one is signed by ACP Suleiman Z Zuberu PSC. Assistant Commissioner of Police Welfare for Commissioner of Police Welfare, Deputy Inspector General of Police, IGP. Can this one be true? It can be true. Like I said earlier, we have a hierarchy. You know, yeah, that, and that, that hierarchy also permits an administrative, administrative structure and channel of communication. When a mail is to be a letter or a signal is going to originate from the Office of the Commissioner of Police, and or they, when that comes from Commissioner, the mobile is under the DIG, and they also, they also have an AIG in charge of the mobile. So there's no way where an AIG can delegate a, a CSP or understand commission to sign a letter which will be sent to an IG and sent to a DIG. It's not, it's not done at all. It, it's, that is not done. That is maladministration. It's not, it's not done. Police administration is not acceptable at all. It's a police standard. It's, okay. not in, it's not in line with police values and police ethics. So I think these are just uh, fabrications made by some, some, some unscrupulous individuals, mischievous, mis mischievous individuals who probably want to cast as passion on the corporate image of the, of the, the police. Right, so, Mr. Bolero, I mean, you said some people had approached you about this a discipline matter. What was that about? Was it connected to this one? Uh, no, uh, the word uh, I got called, when policemen get into trouble, especially those who have had the opportunity of attending my training, they try to look for super, looking for somebody to help them plead with the authority. Uh, in most cases, I don't want to get involved because they are professionals and I'm not part of that professional bodies. So, but I was concerned when I heard about 10 to 12 officers who refused to report. They're supposed, according to uh, Mr. Alobi, they were supposed to go as a compact unit. They are supposed to take off together, they are supposed to arrive there together, brief together, be trained together. At what point did they fall off? So uh, there is an element of truth in that and the without wasting too much time i think we should be concentrating on why if our policemen yeah, are not where were they supposed to be reported to i think they were supposed to report to the northeast it is in line with the 2000 officer that was deployed about three four weeks ago for the five seconds for the, uh, for, for the uh not to, to to support the army in the northeast to support the operation now for lafia Adoli. another point i'm trying to raise which we're missing here is that uh, the military are not meant to clear a village and stay there. If you had about 24 months ago, there was the need, urgent need, to restore civil authorities to villages being cleared by Operation Lafayette Dole. And, and that was in the hair. So whatever happens to that, it is the police officer that are supposed to go back and hold the ground when village A is cleared, the military move on to liberate village B, and the police remain in village A to restore civil authorities. As a result of the state of the emergency declared, they've been asked to leave. Now they need to go back there. Now going back there, if they are not able to go there, 
if there is no facility, there is no building, there is no police station, there is no electricity for signal and communication, could this be the reason why these men are not able to stay there? It's something we should be looking at. Right. Another point we need to look at as well is the relationship between the police and the supervising ministry. Is there a cordial relationship between the Inspector General of Police, First Headquarters, and the Ministry of Police, uh, well, Ministry of Interior, the Police Affairs Division, of the, uh, under the uh, under, uh, General, retired General Abdurrahman Dambazal? So if there is a problem between these two organizations, continuation of business is going to be difficult. And I think it is as a result of whatever friction that is happening between these two organizations, which I'm very, very sure that the presidency... There's, there's some friction. Sorry? You're alleging that there's some friction. I want to believe there is some friction. And I, this presidency shouldn't shy away from the fact that the minister and the first headquarter or the IGP don't seem to have a grasp Yeah, but you don't have proof to that. Other. All right. No, 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 just a minute. But, but Mr. Alobi... Uh, in response to this, uh, in, I'd like you to also, in addition to your response to the, for what he's talked about, is it normal, uh, what's the rationale behind sending policemen in addition to go with the army in the fight against uh, Boko Haram? Yeah, like I did mention to you earlier, the function of the police act provides that one of the functions of the, of the police is that they can be deployed for military operations, either within outside the country. And they this, in this instance, our country is under, under siege by Boko Haram insurgency. The PMF, PMF has professionally trained to combat such situations. And they are trained and they can be deployed when the need arises. And uh, this is not the first time. So I think uh, as the need has risen, the problem, like I said, is based on need. And now that the need has arisen, the, military, the PMF can be, can be deployed to work as, alongside with the, the military. And uh, they, they, that's why it's necessary that they had that joint training, that joint capacity building uh, training for them to, to develop their capacity together so they can work effectively and efficiently to boost their operational capacity and so they can blend and work as a team. So that's the issue of uh, military police being, being, being used. Not just every other policeman, not the commissioner policeman, but the PMF, special, special operation unit that are being deployed for this operation. And they've been trained and given capacity. You see, the PMF is a stacking force and they are training ability from the beginning. It's geared towards uh, such operations, riot operations, uh, military, such military, uh, semi -military, semi military operations, so they, they, I think they have the capacity to, 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 to carry out some functions, and that's that things are that being deployed. They, there's no way the IG or can deploy a policeman who is not trained for any particular uh, uh, assignment, because you need to have the capacity to be able to, 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 to be deployed, and because the extent is that for what you're going to achieve results. Well, if he goes and fail, it also it, get to it that part. On the, on the force. We will get the to that part of the training. Out, right? sure that we'll get to that part of the. My, my apologies, uh, Mr. Lobby. We will get to that part of the training again. But uh, let me get your thoughts on this. The former uh, army spokesperson did come out to say that the army was fighting with very old, if you will, a keg, um, hardware, guns against the insurgents, the Boko Haram, and he was at that time. He came to our studios and uh, made some illustrations saying that we need to upgrade to what will face off squarely with the insurgents. The insurgents are now using drones, we understand. Mr. President has also made uh, comments about that. So then, how well are these policemen that you're deploying, that the Nigerian police force is deploying to the Northeast, how well are they equipped, even the military themselves, how well are they equipped to confront Boko Haram? Yeah, I'm not in the forefront there to know exactly the caliber or weapons, weaponry they are using, but I know that the IG will not, will not. I know the IG, he will not deploy, allow his men to be deployed with bare hands or ill, or ill, or Ill equipped, that, because that would be suicidal. So I know before they are being deployed, they must have been properly equipped in terms of their countrymen, in terms of weaponry, and to be able based on the needs and the challenges they are going to face. But you see, the issue of uh, equipment, today security is technologically driven. And if we really need to make sure that our men go there and excel and uh, uh, achieve the desired objective, they need, to, they need to be properly equipped and uh, with modern, modern equipment, modern, modern weapon, modern uh, uh, gadgets. So that also is a social fact, a notorious fact that we need to accept. 
But Mr. Lobby, I, we know that uh, recent in the, for quite some time now, they, both the military and the police have been underfunded. Mm. Have been underfunded, and that's impeded negatively on the interior of the kind of equipment they are using and the weaponry. Okay. But you see, Mr. Lobby, if I may come in here, Mr. Lobby, there's uh, uh, something that Mr. Yeah. Uh, Tuberson raised here about a possible yeah. friction between the police and the Ministry of Interior. He's alleging that the IGP and the Minister of Interior are not working together in sync. And that's why some of these things might be arising. I don't think there's no cause for that. What should there be that conflict? Are they competing? Is the IG and the minister, are they competing? They have a common goal. The minister is just a supervisory role. The IG is an operational man. They is there to make sure that the men are deployed to combat whatever duties they are assigned to, to carry out. So there's no room for such conflict, such conflict at all. And again, when they, when they train together, that's the essence of this training together. Too. They train together will kind of make them to dominate, to, 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 to uh, develop that unity, spirit of unity, spirit of oneness, spirit of togetherness, a team spirit to work together. The issue of that, that will subordinate their ego. I know the ego is, is, is something that is, 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 is common human, human, human beings. But when they now train together, they now realize that each one, is, each one is, has a complementary role. Each one is, it will assist the other. Each one will accompany the other. They say what well, the life is based on principle of reciprocity, and, 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 and com, com, each one would accompany the other, and complementary. So I think they should not need they, that. That doesn't arise at all. I think it's just it's just figment uh, of his imagination. And there's no cause for that. Most who has nobody has raised that has, has raised that issue. And I don't think Mr. David General General Dambazua and uh, IGP Idris will have any cause to to to, to have any contention or, or disagreement over what over what. Is okay. it about of award of the, 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 the men are then being deployed, even the operational leader, the, 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 the operational leaders in the, the, the Northeast, they all have to work, this, this is, they have to work, work together, they brief together, and all the rules of engagement are given to them collectively, and they have to abide by the rules of engagement. I don't think that is, is unfounded, it's untrue. I don't believe, I don't think that is true.